My beautiful people, welcome back. One thing that's been on the back of my mind lately is this concept of falling behind in life. You see, if you are watching my channel, you're most likely hardworking and very ambitious. But if we don't meet our own expectations, the dark side is that we have this strong sense of disappointment. And so in today's video, I'm going to be diving deep into therapy. I'm going to be diving deep into personal growth because I believe that I have found a solution to helping all of us reduce these feelings of anxiety. 2022 has been a challenging year enough and I don't want any of my viewers to feel further behind in life because of market conditions. Now, before we jump into today's video, I want to thank our sponsor Weeble for sponsoring my channel for the month of March, where they're offering my viewers up to five free stocks valued between $27 and $9,600. So take full advantage of that in my description link below. Now, join me on this journey, turn on that bell, grab a drink with me, and let's dive deep into making sure that we don't ever experience these feelings again. Let's do it. All right, let's jump straight into it. And we're gonna be talking about lots of information, specifically, what is that root cause of feeling behind? And how can we stop these feelings? And in order to do so, I'm going to walk you through this paradox of age and success and how other people's love is not as important as self-love. Then I'll give you some examples of how there are early bloomers, but to be honest, most of the famous people that we know today, they ended up being late bloomers. So don't rush success. There's plenty of time to achieve it because the more you feel behind, the more that can impact your investment strategy and long-term thinking. So I'm now gonna walk you through the root causes of feeling behind. And it comes down to this concept of that human minds are wired to compare. We love to compare ourselves to others. And this can be good information or it can be toxic information, depending on how you use it. Because of the way we spend our time on social media and the way social media presents to us younger people who have accomplished success earlier than us, especially on Instagram, especially on Snapchat, what that does is it creates feelings of jealousness and it creates feelings of being envious. But I'm going to walk you through how to control those feelings and even eliminate them from your system. Now, I want you to know that comparison, it is the thief of joy. And if you've been following my work and if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that this is a concept that I heavily express throughout some of my non-investments related videos. And the reason that comparison is the thief of joy and why it is the root cause of unhappiness for a certain group of people is that the more you look at social media, the more our minds are wired to compare. And when we see people having better lives than us, well, it certainly doesn't make us feel any better. And in fact, we can see this all over forums in the internet. And it doesn't extend to just Snapchat and Instagram. It also plays out in LinkedIn. We can see in some of these Reddit posts that because of constant self-comparison compared to others, that gives you this feeling that you're not accomplishing as much as that you should, and that eventually becomes very toxic. Now we can see in some of these Reddit posts that users are discussing their insecurity with using LinkedIn. And the more they use LinkedIn, the more they see how great their colleagues are doing, the more they see how their colleagues are really moving up in their careers. Feel free to pause this video if you want to read these posts and zoom in. The point of the matter is that the more you use LinkedIn to compare yourself against others, the more you're going to feel as if you haven't accomplished what you set out to do. Social media has this powerful phenomenon of keeping us on the platform longer and longer. That's actually expressed in the Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. I'd highly encourage you to watch it if you haven't yet already. 
Social media, it shows us young success. You know, these are the content pieces that get significant traction because young success, it's equated with desirability. On social media, we're guaranteed to see the accounts of people who seem to live better lives than us, they're richer than we are, or they're more famous. But here's the truth. Nobody posts about their failures. Nobody posts about their humble beginnings. And so that's why I want to walk you through the difference of early success versus deferred success. Now, each type of success is good, but you want to recognize that you do not need to be young and successful to quote unquote make it because success doesn't have a time limit. So early success is great but being able to maintain it is even more important. Now, early success in terms of its definition is that you've achieved a lot of success in terms of wealth, fame, or power at a very young age. Here's the thing, most people who find success exceptionally early on don't have it to be enduring success. In other words, they have a really powerful spike in their career early on, but then they burn out and then they peak early, early in life. And that's actually a root cause for depression later. So trust me when I say that early success is great, but being able to maintain it is key. That's why some celebrities in Hollywood are unable to sustain their success over time and remain relevant. Now, this is a page that should be familiar to almost everybody. It's this concept of Forbes 30 under 30. And don't get me wrong, everybody wants to be on this page. And here's a glimpse into my life. A few years ago, I had an ex-girlfriend who was once 21 years old saying that she had nine years to get to Forbes 30 under 30. And my thoughts were, are you worried about actually making an impact or just getting the recognition? Because the truth of the matter is, measuring your outcome by age 30 is arbitrary. What happens after your 30 is far more important than what you achieve by this specific cutoff. Quick pause, if you resonate with the message that I'm sending or you agree with what I have to say, I'd love it if you gently tap that like button and share my video with as many friends and family members as possible. I want to help you guys succeed. With that said, let's get back to the video. Now, deferred success is far more common and it's more durable. Early success, young success, it's viewed as sexier than finding success when you're older. But the truth of the matter is that older people have more stable forms of success once they go about doing so. The media doesn't really discuss older people being successful as often. Now, why is that? Because that results in fewer views and typically it's a less interesting topic. Social media algorithms know that you will click on what interests you, excites you, or even irritates you. So even if you're in your mid 20s, your late 20s, your early 30s, your mid 30s, and you feel like you're temporarily facing setbacks, if you take a look at this chart, this is a list of famous people who found their footing and found their success later in life. You can see that many, many people actually found their success after the age of 25. A lot of people found their success after the age of 35. So if you're in your 20s or you're in your early 30s, I really encourage you to not rush it. I really encourage you to take it one day at a time because there's a lot of data that says the most successful startups actually are startups created by people who are older than 35, older than 40. And that if you have startups that are run by uh, young, young founders under 25, you can see here, and I'm gonna zoom in, that these founders do well extremely rarely. So that's the type of information that we see in the media, young success. But the truth of the matter is that these are the outliers out of all the entrepreneurs out there. These are the outliers out of all of the successful people out there. And just because you're not necessarily an outlier doesn't mean you're any less successful. Now, the next step is rewiring society's definition of success. 
ever since ancient times, there has been a hierarchy of social class from the farmers to the craftsmen, all the way up until the nobles and then their rulers, the pharaoh. Now, in capitalist societies, just like ones that we live across the world today, it's a similar system, although it feels like we have far more freedom than we actually do. Now, these types of social norms have actually formed a certain definition of success, which I don't agree with. If you Google what success means as a definition, you'll see that next to this green arrow, there is a definition where it reads the attainment of wealth, position, honors, or the like. But my opinion is that money does not always represent success. It is just a tool to advance your goals. And what true success in life is, is that it means achieving the goals that matter most to you. And here's a very powerful example. And I resonate with this, and I hope you do too. And it's this concept where a truly rich man, a truly successful man, is one whose children run into his arms even when his hands are empty. Here's an example. My family may only be middle class, but I view my parents to be very successful as they were able to teach me and my brother what we need to know to find our own success. So my opinion is that if you are putting your best foot forward and you are doing everything that you can, there's no such thing as being behind. And this is the philosophy that I follow. Find a job that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Because if you are heading in the right direction, then you simply must keep going. What other people want for you may not be best for you as a person. So how can you elevate yourself or your career to the next level? The first step is developing consistency. It's very important. I watched an interview recently where influencer Jack Butcher talks about how developing a trusted brand, this intangible asset where you build real estate inside the minds of your audience, inside the minds of the people you work with. And every time you're consistent, you are building on that brand equity. You are building trust. And trust is this compounding factor which you don't reap the rewards of until 12 to 18 months later. But here's the key. The next time opportunity comes, you become top of mind. So one of the greatest things that you can do for yourself is to have discipline and to be consistent. And remember that our journey is nonlinear and that many times success can be elusive until the very end. Here's a list of successful people who we are impacted by today that are late bloomers. We can see that Momofuku came out with instant ramen when he was 48 in 1958. Giorgio Armani started his brand Armani when he was 41. Jeffrey Brotman co-founded Costco with his business partner, Jim, when he was 40. Joseph Campbell started Campbell Soups when he was 52. And Suzanne Collins was 46 years old when the first trilogy of The Hunger Games hit the shelves. The reason I'm sharing this with you is that I know that most of my viewers on YouTube are between the ages of 25 and 44, with a large chunk between 18 and 24, and also 45 to 54. That said, because most of my viewers really are in this stage of their career where they sometimes have these feelings of falling behind, I want to remind you there's no such thing as falling behind as long as you keep going. I know that CNBC, and I know that a lot of media outlets like to discuss statistics about median net worth, about average net worth. But the truth of the matter is, if you are building a very strong foundation for the future, it's very likely that you're going to be able to exceed these estimates once you achieve success later on. There's really uh, no reason to limit yourself and just look at this table as the definition of success or not. Your net worth is very important, but it's certainly not the only thing that defines you. So some of the most 
valuable takeaways that I found from finding deferred success later on in life is this. It's that with disappointments and resilience, you will gain valuable perspective and valuable experience as you deal with these setbacks. And because you're able to reshape expectations since you don't get everything that you want right away, it helps you find more enduring satisfaction later in life. It helps you develop emotional elasticity and being flexible allows you to take advantage of opportunities when they emerge. Now, I know that my channel is mostly about investment strategy, macro research, but believe it or not, all of this mindset training, all of the therapy that I'm walking you through, it is very relevant to not just investments, but also your life as well. Here are some dangers of feeling behind in life because it could potentially make you experience shiny object syndrome when it comes to investments. And this is especially important given that we are in a period of market weakness. I'm asking you to be strong. Don't make irrational decisions if you are in a position of vulnerability. Let me help you understand what shiny object syndrome is. Imagine that you have a current idea and you're committed to it and you're working on it. However, a new idea comes up and it seems to be cooler or more trendy or have more potential than what you're working on and then you instantly abandon your idea, you abandon your principles, you abandon your original strategy. That is not something that you want to do. So here's some dangers of shiny object syndrome. Here's some dangers of feeling behind in life and how that could impact the way we invest. Sometimes for certain people, it could force people to move down the quality ladder in companies in an attempt to capture a stronger return. We could also be tempted to use leveraged ETFs in an attempt to rebound faster from market losses, or we could use long options positions to magnify returns, or even actively trade to try to make back losses. All of these points here that I've expressed will most likely deepen losses rather than help you recover from them and along the way add significantly to your stress. The best hedge, in my opinion, against uncertainty is an investment in yourself. My community on Patreon can help you advance your skills as an analyst and help you build a lifelong skill for the future because the way it works is once you make a decision, you need to follow up on it. And then once you build that skill over time, it will pay you back dividends down the road. And because of the current environment, I'm gonna be adding cool things inside my Patreon for my awesome Inner Circle community in the coming weeks and months, in addition to the core high quality investment research provided. I'm gonna talk about mindset content on how to approach life to be a top performer. I'm going to talk about self-development on how to upgrade your skill sets, how to find personal growth opportunities, and how to develop a champion's mindset during challenging moments. I want to remind you what Pablo Picasso once said, and he once said that every child is an artist the problem is to remain an artist once they grow up. So never forget your mission. Never forget that sometimes things can be challenging along the way. And the next time you feel stuck, hang in there. You might just be at this point over here right before you take off in the coming years. So don't give up. And if you're new, turn on that bell and I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this therapy session. And if you want to support my channel, take advantage of the awesome offer that our sponsor Webull is offering my viewers. Link is in the description below. And with that said, I will see you in my next video.